I'm not sure if he said that's the first time you're crazy <laughs> for Yeti <your> hosting. Yes. <laughs> no, I was more polite. Okay. <laughs> because, because you're funding my people. The, difficult, the interesting thing is, I, I asked around about 10 professors on that one, but nobody really um, tried to step in that one. Same thing we have in our company. If I look for computer science people who want to work in this area, probably a couple of people don't but this is in the background here what Frank has in We use more or less than 95% of all the people. So what we did, we collected the older ones in my age with basic background in good, strong mathematics and physics and optimization theory, so that probably helps you. I do not to step on it. Do you have step on it? So, in general, I have a small video on that one. Automotive industry has a uh, big change to do for the next 10 years, 10, 15 years. Maybe Daimler doesn't exist in 10 years. So, the reason for that is that uh, we have a lot of changes. We have to um, change the uh, way how to um, build energy inside vehicles. We have to change the way how to use uh, automotive vehicles. So we are going more to a company which is more a hybrid company between building vehicles and providing services and giving all the computing power and back end to them. I had a video on that one which is four minutes, so I can't play it because it's without the sound. In general, it shows a lot of things we have to solve in the optimizing traffic finding new, new materials, optimizing the uh, fabrics for um, building all the vehicles. So these things need very, very often solving hard, hard problems. On the other side, okay, magic happens. Yeah. <laughs> Quantum happens. Quantum happens. <laughs> okay. That is the company I just mentioned. That what we did in the past for now around about 140 years. That is the oldest automotive company. It's not the American company. What's an American president very often explained. So, uh, <coughs> what this company really probably can do is building good vehicles, hopefully. But this thing changes very fast in, in the area of services, mobility services, strong growing field. That's one area, and also. We have in all these product areas um, a change how to build the vehicles, electrical vehicles as an example, and we have to go for new materials. That was one major motivation to, <coughs> to look into the area of quantum computing. So um, when I was asked by my management, why do we need this thing? I have two slides for that one. One is yeah, everything what we do or what we did in the past is built on a model which uh, was formulated by von Neumann that a computer is built out of three elements, memory, a control unit, and an algorithmic logic unit where we can implement software and run the programs to solve our problems. The difficult thing with that one is that it was very successful, but since round about 2000, I have heard of it for the first time, 2006, we get out of power for computing. The processor speed for processors will not go beyond 6 gigawatts. That's what internal IBM researchers told me in 2006. That's already 12 years ago. I said, okay, we will see. 2008, 2010, it, you could already see it. It was announced at that time in 2008, a mainframe had a cycle time of 4.8 or 4.9 gigawatts. In the meantime, it had 4.4. 5.4, now we go back to 5. The reason for it, that is temperature, the system needs too much energy. Unfortunately, we have a lot of problems which need strong computing power. We have not enough energy on the world to run these problems. Uh, there is an interesting conference where Richard Feynman explained uh, a new concept of computing, this so-called quantum simulator. And he showed there that a uh, quantum simulator could really uh, run uh, quantum problems with another speed than classical computers can do. So that will be surprising for all my management. So what Wilfried is telling quantum 
uh, cloud computing doesn't help us for the next 20, 30 years to solve the real hard things. We've tried to use it several times to move our simulation problems to a Google Cloud system. What do you think? <coughs> it doesn't work. Because it doesn't provide deep scale. It only provides horizontal scales. You can run wonderful mailboxes <coughs> or parallel the things. So that's, that's one major motivation. To solve this problem, you have in the next 20 years two problems, uh, two possibilities. Move software to hardware. That's what happens in special hardware engines like uh, GPUs. NVIDIA is famous for that one. The second one is to program things in parallel. But there are no so many people in the world who can build parallel programs. Okay. The next one is very easy. Every manager, every guy understands that one. That is a picture from Stuttgart in the morning, November. That's, that's not fake, that's a reality. November 29th, we have daily traffic calls in every city in Germany with a bigger size. We have in Europe, we have in the United States, in Asia, it doesn't matter. So we are stuck in traffic jumps. We have to calculate these things better to optimize the traffic routing problems. If you look to that in detail, you will find a peak problems. That is easy to understand from our measurements. So that comes back to, oh, we also announced a business model where you can buy a route for just this minute when you need it, maybe for euro. Instead of paying navigation system, you're you buying the vehicle. We sell it on demand. But that means incredible computing power to build this business. I can save that one but because Frank has done a wonderful presentation on that one, but here is a little bit of history. He had already explained 35 the EPR paradox. That was probably the starting point for quantum computing. There was a famous conference in 19 1918, together at the MIT with IBM, a conference on yeah, the physics of computation. And there was a thing to introduce this idea of quantum There are other steps in there. I think here, teleportation uh, was um, more or less shown. Shaw's algorithm shocked the security ones. Sometimes I think it's better if this thing will not come. We can solve things which we couldn't solve, but the other things, security, will go away. And uh, we have other steps in there. For us, it's now important can we really use a quantum computer the next five years with 20, 50, 100,000 units to show the value, the benefit we can get on? We skip that one. And maybe I can roughly switch through it. We have seen five different physical implementations for quantum devices. The first one is the most famous, superconducting loops. That is used by three companies, Google, IBM, and uh, Quantum Server. We think that that is for the next five years probably the most successful implementation. Um, physics normally think that trapped ions will be used to implement these things. Unfortunately, there's only one company who is used it. Then silicon quantum dots, which is Support by Intel, topological cubes. Microsoft bets everything on topological cubes. Unfortunately, we have only zero cubes. So it's a zero. It is not there. They will software for something, but it's not there. You will see. And diamond vacancy, that's another way to implement these things. Here are some numbers which are continuously changing. We think that we can get fidelity in the next five years up to 1998. Is quite good to run many of the unsolved problems. Quantum volume. What is the power of a quantum computer? It's not only the number of qubits, it is also the fidelity, the correctness you can uh, get results out of it. Here are some numbers, so um, Frank explained many things, but here's something. Um, a quantum computer is a stable, it lives <coughs> about 400, 200, 300 microseconds. So if your program doesn't end in this very short time frame, the system breaks down. Probably you have to re rebuild the whole thing. It has to be very cold and very silent. But we were at the Yorktown Research Center where you can see all these quantum computers offered by IBM in the back system. So if it's noisy outside the building, the results are bad. 
They're moving now to the uh, Poughkeepsie um, data center where we can produce your mainframe and a much better environment. So if companies announce very good fidelity, that's probably not every day and every hour. It depends on what's going around in this building. That is what we are really interested in. We want to build software to solve the problems. So without having the software pieces and the architecture for that one, it is hard to implement things level of assembler level. We are not used to build software in assembler level. That is the reason the major reason why I asked Frank, because he teaches all these things. What are good software architecture? I said, hey Frank, come on, let's look for can you can you help us these <coughs> things better that we avoid programming problems in gates-based models. What we see, we work together, I will come later on, we work together with Google currently and IBM, and we think this month IBM has completed this picture delivered last week on based on Quizkit. It is a new software package which is Aqua, which allows us in three areas really to, to come to the implementation level. On chemistry? Oh, oh, oh and you could comment, it's a, it's a domain specific game. Yeah. Or chemistry and artificial intelligence and so on. They break it down to the assembly level. So, what, what IBM did here, they used the same module in the language, it's open family, which chemistry people use. So, they can connect it to the back end side that they have not to change the way how to model molecules. Uh, that's probably not the best way to develop a programming language, but it's probably the fastest way to bridge existing knowledge. I have very often seen much better programming languages, but they died, other, over. All these things died, we have to look for what really cool is. Uh, then we have an, an upcoming kit for artificial intelligence, an example for that one. And we hope that we also can get modules and components for optimization. So it's not um, advertisement for companies, I just explain. If you want to do things in the next three, six months, you should look to that one. Google will come up with another big step on that one. Um, that's the major two things we are looking for. Can I ask a quick question? So yeah. you can do the programming, but you can't do the execution. Or can you? You, um, you can do the execution on the backend side. And if you pay a little bit of money, bigger money, you can use it in IBM on a 20 qubit system. So it's actually already executable yeah, code. Yeah, yeah. Only yeah. question of money. That's that. We module molecules, make on a limited set of electrons. That's what we have to do. It's totally critical for the company that we find new, new material. I have an example for that. And the good thing is, our chemistry people, it's Professor Hinternach and Leas. So we have hired professors internally for the material research. They can take their existing knowledge. Originally, they have formulated it in Fortran. So now it's moved over to Python, and they connect it here to the development environment. It goes back to the quantum computer. Good. These are examples for these problems we are looking for from the mathematical side more. But I give you the real problem behind that one. We think for the next five, ten years, there are four major areas in focus. The left one clearly is security. We have to do things for security. Because we have a lot of vehicles down the world, 10, 20, 100 billion vehicles, which are probably not secure in 5 or 10 years. So criminals could take over all vehicles in one shot. Not a good scenario for us. Not for, for me either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, think about that, that one. So that's the reason why I think uh, sometimes it's better for if this thing doesn't work. If it works, it is really hard. The good news is medicine and materials. We will find materials which help us to solve real hard things or medicine with, which we could never see in the past. Machine learning, we will have interesting areas of speeding up machine learning and hopefully we can do all these hard optimization. So, interest areas. These are the eight areas we see currently what we know where these things could be used. In manufacturing and supply chain, we have a lot of MP complete problems. We can never solve that one. Sequencing in the factory is an internal assessment problem with 2,000 points in there. Nobody can solve that one. So it's only uh, we have algorithms which do it 
yeah, as good as possible as we see it. Product simulation. All these simulations is solving linear equations. Material science. We have to look for a lot of areas where you have to find new materials. Testing, software and hardware. We think that testing, full testing of software and hardware is probably possible with such an environment here. Locking does it currently for the missiles, military missile area. Security already mentioned. Mobility solutions. So all these things which you see during driving through cities could be done better, much better, if you can solve the optimization problems behind that. Artificial intelligence could be speed up. I have examples for that one. And many new business models, delivering parcels, Amazon business, could only be built if we have this computing model. That is an example for traveling salesmen. So currently we are building a product, we try to build a prototype for delivering parcels in, in, a, in a city. Here's the general example of it. So if you want to solve traveling salesmen with more than 50 parts, you run up really in an unsolvable problem on classical computers. So we want to solve that one for 20,000 parcels in the city per day, for 200 vehicles, depending on traffic. So that means it is not stable the distance, it changes every 10 minutes. Unfortunately, we need for that one a quantum computer with round about n minus 1 square qubits. It's not there. So we can deliver 50 parcels. And we can do this with classical computers today only for 30 parcels. It's a very easy problem. Excuse me, N was the number of routes or the uh, number of uh, uh, passes or your cities. So oh, if you want oh, to visit number 50 cities, cities, you have you okay. need round about 49 square qubits to hold these target functions. There is an article on there, I forwarded to Frank, that we where it's shown that you can move most of the or many of the linear optimization problems to a problem in this uh, target function in this size. So it gets up in squares. The physics people call this easy problem. So here are the dependencies moved to a target function. <coughs> that makes it difficult for the number of qubits. If you find another possibility to implement it, probably you don't need n minus one squares. So for me, the question is, when do we have these number of qubits available, Frank? You are building <laughs> Nobody, no, no, nobody no. gives you this number. Let, let me say, no. if it is possible to build a stable, 100% fidelity computer with two qubits, it could be that three years later we have one million qubit oh, okay. So if you solve the physical, that I'm not from the era of mathematics, computer, I'm not a physicist. If you solve the physical <coughs> problem to hold the qubits stable, you can design a one million qubits. This is what Microsoft Betting on topology computers because they, by 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 construction, yeah. are stable. Ah, but physicists yeah, right. are very skeptical that Microsoft can do it. Even does it exist? <laughs> so it's hard to bet the whole initiative on this idea that it exists. Okay. But but but, but the problem with this is you you basically have to put into your system the the current traffic, right? That's so, the next. Yeah, that's the next. So, so yeah. how is the data going in? That is basically censoring. So, the so it's not only yeah. number of qubits; it's yeah. fidelity. It's also how can we load the computer yeah. with all the data yeah. in there? Because loading means inference here with the whole system. Right. But that's the next. We need strong companies who are able to build hybrid hardware. So a classical and computer and hybrid software. And hybrid software. <laughs> a classical computer works together with an accelerator of quantum computer. That's not a single own computer, I think. Good. So, uh, just one comment. The reason why I was interested in bringing that to uh, summer circuits because it is cloud computing. So we are thinking about how to break software apart that runs traditionally or in the or in the cloud. And the same problems of each and every quantum informatics guy says that coexistence of traditional software and quantum software. And this is why I wanted to motivate some of you to think yeah. about it and so on. Good. That is another example. So we, uh, if you look to machine learning, we have a special uh, pattern in there which you can find. It's called support vector machines. 
So in this case, you have a number of attributes. Let's assume these are two attributes in there. And you want to separate uh, out of all the measures you have, a separate a line here and predict a new coming attribute. It's on the right side or on the left side. So what they really do, they move into a higher dimensional space, in urban space, and find a linear hyperlink to separate the whole uh, two areas. So if you have 10 attributes, you have to find out a higher dimensional urban space to separate these 10 attributes in 0 or 1. That's the prediction. So currently, I give you an example. We are on the way to test that one. That will be implemented on an IBM Q system. They have built it as a package. And we will test it with welding points in the truck factory to predict if a truck has good welding points or bad welding points. Currently, you have to destroy the truck that's very expensive to find this out. But we have measures on temperature and so on to predict these things. You can take the same model and go to the financial area and predict criminals because people who have hundreds of bank accounts, this is an attribute, probably is a good sign that these are criminals. So defects in welding points are similar to criminals for bank accounts. I quote you on that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so these, you, you see this often. So we have one pattern implemented. We can use it several times in different areas. That is the most interesting topic. We want to find new materials. So the chemistry people module. So that's the interesting thing. If you mod module a uh, molecule, you can directly use the quantum uh, model of analysis and move it over to the Hilbert space of quantum computing. You can really one to one simulate the whole thing. You can find out stable energy situations and not only the structure of molecules, you can also find out ways how to produce it. Um, unfortunately, all these supercomputers break down if you have more than 40 electrons in a complex molecule. We are looking for much bigger molecules to solve an easy, easy problem. That's that one. Everybody wants to have electro vehicles. That means batteries. And for batteries, charging, you need cobalt. And cobalt, there is not enough on the Earth. You, you can measure it with magnetic fields. We have only for 65 million batteries cobalt in the world. Well, they include like cell phones, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and that does not include the solar. So cobalt <coughs> is really here the most important material. If we don't find an alternative to that one, we can implement the half of the volume production we have today. 100 million is the volume production of automotive with electric vehicles. Nothing to say. Stupid. Nevertheless, our politics ignores these facts. Well, no one tells you. Everybody thinks electricity is scale or electrical. Yeah. Is you can build. A, you can build. A, so I'm, I'm just repeating what our material is. You can build a battery with a longer charging time of two days or with a, a distance reach of 150 kilometers, but nobody wants to have these kinds of electrons. <laughs> you want to charge it in one hour, and one hour is already too long, too long, and you want to have a distance of 500 kilometers, right? Security, as I mentioned, is gone. So we have to find out new ways <coughs> to increase post-quantum security, so all our security guys are in trouble now, and then try, we try to build up a working team to make our product secure for the next 20 years. <coughs> so what is the major hardware vendors? It's IBM. IBM has already a long history in this area since 2001. It's Google who joins this club in 2011. It's D-Wave. D-Wave is the only company shipping commercial quantum annealer, which is a special version of quantum computing. So what you see today, they have shipped five computers, I think. One is at Google. Google offers annealing through D-Wave. So if you calculate currently quantum results through Google, it's D-Wave and the, It is not a game page. The Chinese and the Russians also use the IBMs and the... I haven't... I, I skipped it. There's a big uh, chart in there. What is the financial spending of all areas of the world? So China has announced 
the European Union has announced that's one of the next parts. So we are currently kind of with Google and IBM only. And that is the summary. Uh, I have written it down here or now. Uh, quantum <coughs> computing are getting about real, let's assume, five to ten years. It's easy for me here to say five to ten years because I'm only six months in the company. Probably it needs somebody my age to work in this area, but nobody else wants to take the risk here to have totally failed. Mm -hmm. The next one is, um, if this works, we will very fast have a computer or chip with 1,000 qubits. Even 1,000 qubits have possibilities which are unbelievable. Here are some numbers. A quantum computer will break existing security. It will change the way our material is developed. It will solve, hopefully, many NP-complete problems. The optimization process is currently the hardest one because of the bigger uh, number of qubits. And it will reduce deep learning problems instead of hundreds of years. So currently, if you learn all driving situations of pictures, we need hundreds of years to drive through all areas of the world to learn how to drive a vehicle. That doesn't really make sense from the, uh, from the learning time. We can re reduce this probably to yeah, minutes or seconds. Here are some predictions. Today, you can only get a quantum computer in the US. China has announced to invest the next five years 50 billion on that one. The European Union collects now the next round, one billion, I have heard. There's another good news. There was a discussion three weeks ago with the Deutsche Bundestag. Germany wants to spend four billion in companies that join this year. Four billion on quantum computing. Germany only. Yeah. Otherwise, we lose here the second time in Europe. Uh, the whole game to the United States or to China. Do you know how much the US spends? No, but I think only IBM and Google. So it means the NSA, CIA. Yeah, but you can. Rotate that yeah. So I think the military area is mostly interested in security. They want to crack the crime factors. Mm -hmm. But that is not the only interest in them. And uh, the military area has also high interest to uh, come to a next generation of weapons. So you can calculate a lot of things which you are not able to calculate, finding new materials. So that is the uh, government area. But the commercial area is also very, very interesting. Google invests here only for search. Google is a search company. We are, we want to invest here, what I think, for solving our problems we have, our daily problems. Yeah, that is our new electric vehicle. Yeah. Hopefully we can build for that one. Better than a billion batteries. <laughs> <laughs> We have questions. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at you now more, more in a broader sense. If you have this kind of vision, you need people to implement it. Meaning, we have to change our education to give you the next generation of. Uh, That's why he's here. The, the crazy thing is, why I started to also support us in that when, when I started in computing, that was just me. 81. <laughs> you are too old. I started in computing in 81. So Normally, you have an education in mathematics, physics, electronics. Today, if you have computer science, probably only or business administration. Unfortunately, these guys do not really, are used to work in urban spaces, understand the theory behind that one, the way how to do it. Computer science guys. Right. That's, that's mostly all. We found at Daimler, out of 10,000 people, at least in computer science, too. The other guys I took out of the older age with physics background, mathematics background. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to think about a new education profile for upcoming people. That's, that's why I have asked him, can we build a training curriculum? You have seen the first version of it. We will do internal trainings for people who are interested to work in this area. <laughs> Unfortunately, many people are very interested, but if it comes to the mathematics and physics, <laughs> they go no away. They have no interest to learn these things again or, or, or to update them. I don't know why. 
for me, it's complex. No, for me, between the nature is I only worked 40 years for IT. I could never do these things. Now I have to leave the company, but I can do it. Crazy. <laughs> okay, I'm lucky, so Frank seems to be get interested in that one and builds curriculum and builds people for that one for the next 10 years. Okay, question. Okay, so the next book is very educational talks. Um, one question that I had, it seems that certain uh, complexity, complexity heavy uh, algorithms are here. So is there a need for a universal yeah. computation model such as the following model for this or can we just implement five uh, algorithms or 50 algorithms and, and that's it? And uh, that's happening. Would you answer that one? Yeah, uh, I, I was shouting <laughs> again. So what kind of algorithms? The, the killer apps in of this yeah. uh, model are some com complexity heavy uh, yes. cases yes. where sure. you want to convert the exponential factor to a polynomial or whatever, right? Um, and it seems to be a lot of technology in building these machines. It, it seems to be uh, the hardest you know, task yes. uh, here. Uh, and thanks for revealing the, the, the important thing there is uh, the fact that you measure one thing and the rest is gone. gone yeah. um, now, the question is, is there a need for a universal computation model such, such as a von Neumann uh, machine you know, for conventional computing? Or can we just implement 20 uh, cases uh, and one is so having 20, 20 basic algorithms, basic which algorithms. will then have everything? Yeah. Hmm? yeah. So, yeah, there's a good story that this is kind of illusion. One of the most important ones is the gate model today, uh, which show different kind of models. Uh, in reason for their following is called measurement-based models. So there's not a single from normal architecture, but the industry is playing around with several architectures, four or five different architectures, other architectures, and the languages are different. We are discussing in Stuttgart with our quantum physicists that the ability to translate a gate model algorithm to a measurement-based algorithm this is a research level, but this is a we have, we have the same idea that we basically have, right? Can we build an expert compute model that the underlying hardware can be isolated? This is only called the only one reason. Right? I think for the, there's a good article from Presco. Presco is a professor at the California Institute of Technology who has worked many, area, uh, many years in this area. And he describes an area what's called NISC. So that's noisy, intermediate, um, want to compute it for the next five years, so that's more what I would suggest to focus on for the next five, ten years to limit what is possible and to extend the scope of human work solving problems. With this thing, we probably can already practice prime factor power and we can solve a lot of machine learning algorithms and optimization. There's another observation. We don't need energy for that. We have not enough energy to run this crazy thing blockchain. So currently the energy consumption of blockchain is bigger than building ones. Mm. In three years we run in danger that this is United States. So nobody can pay for the energy to look for all these um, yeah. blockchain swaps. Doesn't <coughs> make sense. We have to stop that. Yes, sir. Um, one, one remark to, to your lecture. Uh, I think it was a rough ride <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, different things came together, and then on the mathematical side, that was quite clear. I think um, for the beginning, I think the Schrödinger's cat experiment. I think that was an argument of Schrödinger against the idea of um, of this kind of probabilities because he actually came up with that idea, as far as I know, he actually came up with that idea, um, if, if nature behaves this way, then you must see a cat uh, behaving this way, which is not true. So the question was, uh, why don't we see that? He was uh, more, he was not in favor for the probability interpretation of a quantum theory. And I also think that uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty, uncertainty principle is, um, implication of non-commutative commutative matrix multiplication. It has something to do, but Heisenberg was uh, a fan
fan of saying that the measurement process is part of the physical process. So I, I, I don't think that this tightly rela this relates no. somehow to the probability so interpretation, but I think it came from another side. And so at the beginning, there was so different things like superposition, Schrodinger's cat, Heisenberg, and so did see principle. They all came from different sides of different Absolutely. schools. Absolutely. And there are still different schools in yeah. interpretation. Yeah, definitely. So I think, I think one of the major things in which came up was the quantum mechanics saying that, OK, we found a relation that uh, kind of doing the quadratic um, or just square the wave function, Schrodinger's wave function, behaves <coughs> properties which are similar to uh, probability interpretation. That was, I, I think that's the groundbreaking thing here, to have this understanding. But there were many people coming from quantum physics saying that they, they, they're not, they, they, don't, they don't like this idea of having this probability interpretation. All that I can interpret now, that there are different schools. Definitely. The yeah. that, that the term of quantum physics and, and this is a, a great tool, definitely. Okay. So that was, for Neumann's postulate, saying quantum mechanics is a great tool, although we do not understand where it comes from, basically. But it works. But it works great. Yeah. 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 Well, I have a question about the programming model aspect of quantum, because I think clearly on a long term basis, the quantum computing is not similar to quantum computing. Really there are certain problems for which Quantum algorithms are absolutely the right algorithm, but there are bigger problems in which this is a subpart of like GPU in the side component of it. So, do you feel the work that Microsoft is doing with QSharp, and I'm not familiar with the idea of what I'm doing, even that some C++ library has done, is that the right direction for how to create a um, programming experience? I think the programming language, how to program these kinds of hardware, is currently not defined. Microsoft web bets on a new programming language, Kushar, what they have done very often in the last 30 years. Uh, if you look back to the history of programming languages, probably I can now build 100 programming languages. I've seen only five which have a broader usage. Probably two are very ugly. It's Fortran, it's Gogo, it's Java. So it's not over on the other C. 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 So now, now it's called Python. Many companies use here Python because of the existing community for optimization and for uh, machine learning and these things. So probably we will not have really a new program there. That's the question is can we bridge the existing one to this backend system with the right mappings and underlying data? That's the whole. Um, that is the question to the programming languages. To answer the universal hardware, there are people there which think we can replace in 20 years all the existing hardware because of the energy, energy consumption. Currently, Microsoft replaces many of the hardware pieces in their cloud data center with the media, which is the most expensive hardware. The reason for that is very easy. They save energy. They don't tell anybody about that. The biggest cost factor in data centers is not hardware. It is energy. We are wasting all the energy in the world if we go on with computing. Think about the carbon footprint for the, uh, for the computer industry. Nobody talks about that. One. <laughs> well, the, it shouldn't be carbon, right? Yeah. The energy should be produced. Yeah, but, uh, but think about that. Think, think yeah, about all yeah. energy. Yeah. So one reason is this thing does not eat energy. Why should we not use it in it's 20 years it's as a universal computer? computer? There are many, many reasons for using this universally, but I cannot say that's the path to do it. Okay. Is there another urgent question? Otherwise, I think you will enjoy Good. lunch. Ah, oh, uh, thank you. Uh, those of you who have to present the poster, uh, post with, please bring the poster to the <coughs> by tomorrow noon. By tomorrow noon. By tomorrow noon. Yeah, the, ah, the is there. So that he can bring it down, or the hotel guys can bring it down and hang it there and so on. Yeah? So posters until tomorrow, Themis. Today? Now? Yes.
Okay, so before we leave the dinner, the traditional picture, the team picture will be taken. And I ask you a second to come. Yeah, so let's go out for a team picture. And then dinner will be reconvened at 3 o'clock. Uh, lunch. We reconvene at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock.